Hey, you know what time it is? It is Sipping with Sue time, and I am Simoy Tovez. And if you're joining us for the first time, I'm getting untangled from my uh, earbuds right now because it's been that kind of a week. Happy Friday. If you're joining us for the first time, we are live on Facebook and on YouTube. And if you have not gone over to my YouTube channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to get all the latest content as soon as it is posted. So this week we are just uh, ready to let our hair down. We're ready to ready to go. Cheers to the weekend. And um, we are like, I'm super excited. We are kicking off Women's History Month with my good friend, my sister in arms, who I haven't seen in forever, Graciela <laughs> Martinez Katz. Cheers to you. Girl. Hello. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Toast. <laughs> I know. Prost. I mean, how many countries have we been in and locations? Oh my gosh. I think I lost count. So career Italy? wise, yeah, career wise, I've been I PCS twelve times in my twenty. I know. Years. And and then I, I ran into you like three of the in three different locations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's saying. not even counting all the deployment locations and then just mm -hmm. TV wise, you know, mm -hmm. you know how it is. So I mean all over the world, but it's nice to be back in the States, actually. So it's nice to have a a, a time a to day. enjoy enjoy some of the things we have here at home, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. I know I was living vicariously through you guys in Korea because <laughs> I had never been to Korea. And I was like, where are you? She's like, Korea. And I was like, I've never been. And you're making this look fantastic. That made me the rest. <laughs> So you got, you got to try it all. That's the thing. When you go to all these places, it's like you can't hold, you know how it is. You can't hold back. You got to go and, and give it all a chance, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, okay. So I think we have Miss Jennifer on. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. We love you too. <laughs> love you. <laughs> yeah, so Graciela and I go way back to Aviano days, and that was probably, that's in the 2000s. So yeah. we've known each other for quite some time. Wow, and, and you came to Holloman, to New Mexico. Yes, I came to Holloman. <laughs> that's how we, well, that's how I got intro, introduced to Jen and, and the entire crew there because of yeah. you, and you were dancing at the time, this little, um, you know, Puerto Rican girl. She's like, I can hula, I can shake my hips, I got this. <laughs> Those were some good times. I missed that. I oh missed my that gosh. Whole group. Yeah. Yeah. It was so much fun. Yeah. And it's a lot of work. That hula it is a good. lot of work. <laughs> I mean, I had Jen on one side and Minnie on the other, and they were both like, stop salsa dancing. Yes. You need to keep your upper body straight. And I was like, what do you mean? What do you That's mean? The hardest part. It's like, we're used to doing this. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So yeah, so then we get to New Mexico and then and then I saw you in Germany for I probably like yeah. a, a TDY or something like that too. So you came out to Germany as well. So well, totally we always managed to cross paths at some point. Soon we'll see each other in San Antonio. So yes. it's like we have those paths crossing, all of us. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But um, Graciela has retired, retired um, from the military a few years ago, right? Almost a decade. This year oh will be gosh. my 10 year anniversary. Dang. I know. <laughs> I, know. So I can't believe it. Wait, so you retired before me then? I retired in 2012. A year before. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. 2013. Okay. So yeah. Rasiel retired and then took some time off just like I did. We let our hair down and we were drinking at 10 a.m. because oh, we yeah. could. <laughs> Enjoy, enjoying retirement. That's like the thing I tell people all the time. <laughs> yes. Yes. Enjoy retirement, lap it up, and then moving on to now your new passion. So um, we're going to go ahead and get um, things kicked off and started with um, telling us just a little bit about your background. I mean, we know that you know you've uh, you've been in the military you retired but just a little bit of your background where you came from where you are now in the world just so that folks can get acquainted with you um okay so yeah i um grew up in jersey i'm a puerto rican girl from jersey so a ton of family on the island so a lot of back and forth travels um joined the military which kind of took me everywhere um i I mean, the military was like the blessing in disguise that I didn't really plan on. It was just one of those things. I was watching Top Gun and the commercial for Air Force recruiters popped on. And I was like, I think I would like to check this out. I'm going to see where this takes me. And it was the best decision I ever made. So, um, but yeah, and after retirement, it was just one of those deals where I um, 
finished school. I wanted to be a nurse, but it was hard to do nursing programs mm -hmm. when you're traveling and deploying all the time. So mm -hmm. um, I, I shifted gears and went into physical therapy and sports medicine and did that for a while um, before COVID hit. And, mm -hmm. um, and that was, it was literally, I started ideas just started popping into my head. And from there, I was just kind of, it just went from there and, and reinvented myself, I guess, like a lot of us did during mm -hmm. that, that stage. So, but yeah, yeah, and now, <laughs> yeah. so um, I continued traveling because I'm, my husband is still active duty. So we're now stationed in New Mexico. So we went everywhere. We went from Boise, Idaho, um, which we love uh, from there. They took us to Germany and this was all post retirement. So, and then Germany, now we're back here in New Mexico. So, um, and loving it, loving it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a great experience. So you're closer to me, so I'm going to see yeah. you. Soon. Yeah. So that's, I'm closer that's to a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the main things. I'm like, who am I close to now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you yeah. realize in the military, again, our military, military threads run super deep. And then you start going to places and you're just like, okay, this person's here, this person's there. And you yeah. just meet up and it's like, you pick up where yeah. you left off. It's yeah. just great things. So I exactly. love it. Exactly. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your book writing journey. So have you always wanted to write your own book? or was it like uh, you just said where it just popped into your head and now it's it's starting to I kind mean, of work. my only experience in writing was uh the 20 million papers i had to write for my master's degree you know that was about as far as i got but i did get a lot of praises from my teachers some of them they were like you should put this in journals because it's very well written blah 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 you know so i kind of started checking out avenues for that you know um and then it was just, I don't know, the, the story's always been in there. Like I always imagined this character, this one character in my head that she was, she, she was the main thing that started it. As my career went on, every time I went somewhere, traveled to a new country, I imagined her mm -hmm. and how she would be the strong person, yet slightly slightly has some her faults just like all of us do and it kind of went from there and I every now and then I would jot notes down I had them like in a little notebook that I would keep for years and then um, like I said COVID hit and um, it was literally shut down and I just remember waking up it was got to be like 12 o'clock and 12 o'clock at night one o'clock in the morning and like her story was going it just was going and so I just sat down and started writing and it was like one o'clock in the morning till about 6 a.m. And next thing you know, about three chapters in and it just kept going from there. It just blew up. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to see where this goes. Like for me at the time, it was still just a hobby. It, it still is, you know, so it was like, I'm just going to sit down and see where this goes. Next, thing you know, other characters are getting created and I'm just and it's just exploded from there. So. And I, and I ran with it like it like with all of that, all of those sticky notes and colors uh, behind you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah, it's literally it has. And when I say it exploded, like it exploded, like the 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 characters became alive. I would be sitting watching TV or or just going for a run. And all of a sudden I can hear their voices with what kind of dialogue they're going to say next to a certain yeah. situation. I just put them in, you know, awesome. and my editor calls me a discovery writer. She's like, you're a discovery author. And it's usually described for people who they just, I know where I want the plot to go. Like I know already know it's just, I don't really know the direction it's going to take it. Just go. I just go with the flow. Okay. And it really is just more the characters are really taking me where they want, you know? <laughs> and awesome. then I just kind of research it and go, okay, if this is where you want to go. Let's figure this out. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. So tell us about, tell us a little bit about um, the books, to, uh, the book. So you've got the first book um, mm -hmm. that's up and coming. Um, tell us a little bit about that book and then um, the, the books that are coming, which is the trilogy, and then uh, what inspired the stories. I know that they're coming to you in, in your head, but what, in, what inspired this main character? So, like I said, the main character, um, she's, she's a tough gal, um, but there's, there's faults there, you know, and I, all of them have faults, all of my characters, but um, 
it's kind of like came in the sense of my military career. Every time I went somewhere, I'm this young, barely five two girl in mm-hmm. you know in an environment that's primarily men, you know. Um, and uh, things are changing, thankfully, when you when you look at that those numbers. Um, but it's like I kind of found myself always imagining. You ever seen the show Allie McBeal where she just imagines herself doing something, mm-hmm. you know? So that was kind of how I did it. Whenever I was put in a certain position, I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to be the tough gal, you know, that I think I could be. So I think I can do this, you know? And so this character grew from that. Um, so she set, the story is set in World War II mm-hmm. era, which the research for that just that that just carried me the whole way because there's so many female care uh, not even characters female real females yes. out there in our history who really set the pace for mm-hmm. things and when i discovered some of them and i put them in my story so my my stories are historical fiction so i've got real characters in there that i've tossed in with my fake ones with my mm-hmm. fictional ones um, and it's just amazing, like how I kind of made her grow and you can kind of understand, okay, there's some issues going on. She's still trying to figure them out as she goes, but she's, every time she learns about it and more people, she's got her friends and her family that come into play and they all help that expand, mm-hmm. you know, everybody, it becomes a team thing. You know, and so it's not just about her. It's not just, it was never just about me. It was about the team that had that I supported and, you know, we supported each other, all those other females out there. Awesome. I did. So, yeah. yeah, So, okay. So how does the, um, so this is book number one. How does the trilogy kind of um, morph itself into, into play? Like, is it, um, cause you have an editor and you have, I'm mm-hmm. sure, you know, the publisher and all that stuff. How does that actually work? Um, when you're, do you have a set timeline where you have to get the next two books like out or how does that work? Yeah. So, um, learning curve all the way. Cause like I said, I'd never, never done anything like this before. So thankfully I have a slew of fellow authors that have jumped in to help me and they've been kind of just guiding me on this entire process. Um, one thing was that a lot of people were surprised when I told them was I actually already wrote all three books. All three have already been written. Okay. So nice. during that entire two years of us being in COVID and shut down and all that, I pretty much knocked out all three books. So now it's just editing and, and mm-hmm. you know, getting them cleaned up. Um, Timeline wise, as far as like everybody, I'm, I've never, I'm a big reader. I love reading trilogies. So that's kind of why I went with a trilogy because I always, I fall in love with these characters and I want to see what happens next. Of course. So that's why I created it to a trilogy. So for the first one that comes out, I've never been a big fan of waiting a year to, to, to see what happens next. I mean, it's okay because sometimes that happens and then you just have to reread the first one, which is fine too. Um, but for this one, it's usually about four to six months is what um, I'm planning is okay. to have this one come out and then four to six months later have the second one and then four to six months later after that, the third one. Um, the stories kind of roll. I have, I have, the first one, people have some, have discovered some things. Mm-hmm. There's answers to a lot of questions. However, I've also created new questions mm-hmm. that I'm going to leave the reader wondering, okay, well, then now, now what? Like, so you're going to have to wait till book two to see. And then again, it all becomes a, you'll see the pattern. Eventually the reader will see the pattern that it's about so much more than just this one character. Like you start to see there's more people involved in the story that have a whole uh, effect on the bigger picture. And and as each book comes out, the second one, and then the third one, boom, will be the, the final reveal of hopefully, hopefully everybody will see everything that I've kind of tossed in there throughout the first and second books. They'll see and they'll go, oh, now it makes sense. <laughs> 
So oh. yeah, so I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's a, it's like I said, historical fiction, but fantasy. Mm -hmm. So it involves, you know, the the myths and legends mm -hmm. out there that a lot of us know about. So it's just I'm playing along with that, you know, and having some fun with it. Yeah, awesome. So with um, with coming together, so for somebody that's out there that's never written a book before and never even, you know, dabbled in that. So how did you get in with, um, I guess, learning, you know, hey, I, I need to go with this editor or what publisher is good and, and how do I go about doing that? How did that work for so you? So I, I reached out to a friend of mine um, that has her own publishing house. Um, okay. Unfortunately, she only does nonfiction books. Um, so, but she was like immediately jumped in to answer all of my questions and and help me. Yeah, pretty much just helped me along the way. She's the one who who gave me the name of an editor that that is also a writing coach, and that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing. Where she's like, she's like a lot of people they when they're starting out they find an editor and and go with it, but she recommended I find someone who's also a writing coach who can help me understand how to do these things, you know, how to make things sound right. And, and she's, she's been amazing. So, um, and then like for, for these kinds of stories, a lot of research, I just kind of researched a lot of writers, blogs and, and websites on all of that. And a lot of them lean towards uh, trilogies like this one. Uh, they're a bigger sell when you do self-publishing. So that's one of the reasons why I've kind of just directed myself and aimed for that for mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of, it makes it a little bit easier, but harder at the same time because I'm responsible for everything. <laughs> so, but like I said, I found, I found an amazing group of auth fellow authors that all started out like I did and they, they are amazing. And so we've all, it, we, we talk to each other almost on a daily basis with, okay, this is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. Uh, I have a friend who can help you with this. I mean, it's just been an internet uh, or not internet, but a web of just connections. Mm -hmm. Internet it's, web girl. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interwebs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so so it's, been a, it's been amazing. I found some really made some new friends <laughs> that are all, all over the world. Really. There's some that are from Canada that I've talked to, um, to here in Texas, like they're, they're all over the place and they've been amazing, amazing. So, and I'm learning as I go, like I already have plans for the next three sets of trilogies. I've already got outlines set out for those. Man, yeah. so, so you're, when, you're like, I'm running, I'm out the I, gate, I'm going. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when I say that the story exploded, it exploded to multi-universes because I'm not saying it's gonna be like Marvel style, but, um, it's like the first one, one thing I will give away, that's okay, I'm not giving away any secrets. You'll notice that it's based off of uh, this, the powers of the sun, so fire. Mm -hmm. um, that's the, the one of the main things of this storyline. And mm -hmm. all three, it leads for all three. So my mind immediately went to, oh, the next three tril trilogies would be fun to do based on Earth wind and, and water, water. so <laughs> yeah. that's, that's awesome. where that's where it's headed so uh heads up to anybody who ends up falling in love with this story look look for the next three sets of trilogies that are be coming mm -hmm. out because i'm i'm haven't decided if i'm gonna connect the characters in there or make them separate or just have like little cameos mm -hmm. we'll see but it, it'll be fun i'm already excited i'm already reaching out one of them is going to be set in italy so i'm already reaching out to everybody yes I need I need everybody's help to to give me like I mean look, I lived there for four years total. You were there for quite some time too. Four so and a half. Have, yep. We have our own memories, but you know I, I like to hear other people's experiences too, so I can yes. kind of build on. So Bruno, them. Dita, Vicky, exactly. hey, we need you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I reached out to my old landlord <laughs> and his oh, wow. daughters. Awesome. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, um, like I'm drinking, I told you I was drinking my Benducci. This is my last of my Tuscan, <laughs> um, Tuscan wine of this uh, brand of this uh, particular grape. And so um, I, I'm, I'm more than willing to be, you know, the person that goes back <laughs> to, to help you out. <laughs> 
And so everybody knows I love my wine. I'm, I'm a big wine drinker. It doesn't matter what kind, where it's from, any of that. So, you know, I had to include it in my, in my story. So my characters do drink port wine because mm -hmm. I do have part of the story set in Portugal and, Ooh, and, and, and my experience with I have family in Portugal. So my experience with some of my travels to Portugal, I included that in there. And, awesome. and we talk a lot about grabbing a glass of port wine every now and then. <laughs> I fell in love with Portugal last year when I went yeah. and um, fell in love with, I, port is okay. Port is okay. Port, yeah. White port. Blue oh, mind. Yeah. yeah. Blue my mind. I was like, what is this? How come I've never don't seen know. This? Yeah. So good. And then know. their green yeah. wine. Uh, yeah. Thin day. Mm, delicious. Yep. I know it's so great. So I'm hoping I enlighten a few of my readers with wine. <laughs> Cause absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That was a good thing. And we were just talking right before we came on, um, Graciela, when, uh, I came to Italy, I, I, I came from Italy and, and got to New Mexico and you remember you were already there and uh, we wound up meeting each other in Walmart and then it became a, Hey, Graciela, come over. I had a pallet, <laughs> pallet you guys, that was literally delivered with my household goods from the military yeah. from Italy and we waxed off damn near that whole pallet of wine. <laughs> yeah. In like five months. <laughs> and and things have not changed because I can still do that now. <laughs> and I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so when can we expect the book to be released? Uh, so for now, it's definitely planned for the first week of April. So like, oh, wow. I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping first week of April, I'm just doing the final touches, editing touches. Um, I still have a few more little tweaks to make here and there. But I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we're shooting for the beginning of April, it'll be on Amazon. So like I said, I'm self publishing. So I'm just loading it up on Amazon, um, Kindle, all of that good stuff for anybody who has that. I have on my phone. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Like I, I think, I think people will enjoy it. I hope they enjoy it. It's, and that's the only reason why I'm doing it. I'm not trying to be this, this grand, you know, success that's, you know, JK Rowling or those guys, you know, I'm just, I just want to have fun with this and I hope other people mm -hmm. enjoy You never it. know though. I mean, girl, you dream big. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Who's going to be, yeah. who will play your character in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> have you well. thought about that? Have you thought about that? Well. Well. It has to be somebody who likes drinking wine. That's all I can say. <laughs> Food for thought. We'll we'll catch up with exactly. you on the next episode. We'll be like, okay, so the book's out, the movie's gonna happen. Who's playing, you know, the lead character? Yeah. 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 Awesome. So I'm excited. So how can we get um how can we get updates? And how can like do you guys do you have like a website? Do you have a blog where we can get updates um as you're going along the process? Or is there anything like that for for um for your fans? Yeah, I am. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm like I said, I'm learning. I'm learning. This is all a learning curve for me. So I just set up an Instagram account like a month, two months ago, about yeah. two months ago. And basically I've been that one specifically for, you know, book promotion and all that stuff. And, and my experience, you know, experience with the thousands of stickies that I that I'm getting uh, drowned by. <laughs> um but yeah, for now, we've got the Instagram, my Facebook. Um, eventually, when I get everything set up in Amazon, I will have a, an author profile set up on there okay. that people and I'll update all of my all of my books and, and everything as it's get, as it's in the works. Mm -hmm. I'll put stuff on there. Um, and that's pretty much it. I, I may I haven't really decided yet if I'm going to set up a little website. Mm -hmm. to do some things on there so I'm thinking about that as well but for now it's everybody can pretty much if they follow me on Facebook on Instagram you'll see everything because I'm usually putting daily updates on there okay perfect and then so we're looking for daily updates on Facebook and on Instagram and we'll definitely make sure that your pages and all of your information is put in the feed after yeah. uh, we and get off of here yes. and then also um 
we can look for the book uh, around April 1st, which it's my birthday month. So happy Yay! birthday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's amazing. So awesome. So is there anything else you'd like to add on the book or, you know, how you got there and, or any, you know, this journey in general? Um, it's been a lot of fun. Like I, I find myself, it's one of those things where it took a long time, like, you know, what, 20 years in the Air Force, mm -hmm. master's degree, worked a couple, about six years doing yoga and working in physical therapy and stuff. And I absolutely loved all of that, but it didn't become a, an actual obsession until I started writing. Mm -hmm. And it's to the point where really like I wake up in the morning and that's the first thing I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely, I absolutely just fell in love with the entire process and, and I look forward to it every day. Like I, like I said, I'm already excited about working on the next sets, you know? And so, and, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping out of the entire process that when people finally see the finished product, they kind of see an inspiration out of it, you know, like I want to see, there's so many people out there that they've always come to, you know, they, they see this so far. I've gotten a lot of responses saying, Oh my gosh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. Well, I never thought I could, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't mean just writing. I mean, with anything, I didn't think I could do this, but if you, if you hesitate or just not hesitate, jump in and do it and try and see what happens mm -hmm. and see what happens from there. And then you never know that that fire in your belly that you didn't know was in there just ends up, exploding yeah and with my story I kind of didn't even didn't even see it happening until I until I kept writing and I just mm -hmm. started noticing that it's it's very much like this is kind of perfect timing that you did this for women's history month because it is a very female empowered type of story mm -hmm. it's very girl power in there so a lot of my lead characters are all strong tough women you know Good. um they still have their issues just like we all do but and that's why i did it that way because i i want them to be real i want people yeah other than the other than the, the mythical part of the stories they're real <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So well good because we need that inspiration. We need that power. We need, you know, that drive. We need those other people out there doing what you're doing so that, you know, these younger the younger generation and other people that come behind us can sit there and be like, I am inspired and yeah. I want to do that too. And you know, you have those good positive exactly models to kind of just exactly. go forward with so fantastic exactly and that's the one thing like if anybody gets anything out of this i just hope there's a few people that i've touched and inspired to to do the same thing to to jump forward and do whatever it is that they thought they might be able to do one day mm -hmm. and they just never thought they could and hopefully they'll wake up in the middle of the night one day and say i'm gonna do this <laughs> It's like an explosion of sticky notes. <laughs> and, yep. And then next thing you know, a couple of years later, this. <laughs> yes. That is so freaking awesome. So I thank you so much for coming on. Thank, thank you for you. telling us all about your new book, the trilogy and the trilogies to come, which is also super exciting. Thank you. Thank um, you so again, much for having me. Yeah, <laughs> always. It's been so long. And, you know, we kept running into each other and, and um, crossing paths throughout our entire two decades of our military careers. So this has been outstanding to see you doing this and you know putting your heart passion and fire into it so i am super proud of you and excited for these books because i'm a big reader and yeah i've got my candle here on my phone and like I can't wait and I'm a huge proponent of like um a lot of my books are coming from Amazon anyway and so this is just too easy <laughs> I'd be like please, please. And it'll be like <laughs> And like heaven knows, like I I no longer sit on a plane anymore to and and you know put in my buds and and watch movies. Um, I stopped doing that uh, probably a couple of years ago because I yeah. did find uh, my Kindle app out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden I'm like, <laughs> I just want to read, and it takes Good. me to yeah. a way place, and um, it you know appeases my mind and lets my mind go and travel to other. Um, destinations and other places and into other feelings and and people and and just experiencing all of that which a movie is good to do that when you just want to mm -hmm. decompress but a book is so much better oh yeah. So, yeah there's 
<laughs> there's a one blog that I'm on and somebody made the comments that somebody asked them what do you get out of reading like there it was somebody who's not a big reader and they asked another person what do you get out of reading and the first thing that popped into my head and I responded to the blog and said uh, that Willy Wonka movie mm -hmm. it's about imagination yes come yep. with me and you'll see a world yep. of imagination and that's what it's all about it is. It's about, it is. It's about imagination. So, and that's what took me there. I just yep. have a huge imagination, and I just rolled with it. <laughs> and you're exercising your mind uh, creatively and taking yourself to those places with your mind when you read. So, it's uh, movies are fantastic for the visual, for the audio, for you know all of that. But it's there's nothing mm -hmm. like a good book. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again. So like I do, like I love to do actually with all of my guests, I like to do a just for fun speed round. So are you ready? Yep. <laughs> right. So favorite author? Uh, right now it's uh, Nora Roberts. I've been a big fan of hers for awesome. a long time. Yeah. Very I cool. mean, I'm reading Diana Galbadon, Galbadon right now, the Outlander series. Okay. So okay. yeah. Cool. And I haven't seen that. So I haven't watched it or I haven't like okay. read that though. So yeah. I highly recommend you read the books first. <laughs> so that's what I started doing. Um a huge Anne Rice fan. Huge yeah. Fan. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. I um I stopped uh when I you know, I read Interview with the Vampire and or was I in I might have been in the middle of Interview with the Vampire when I went mm -hmm. ahead and, um, and started watching the movie. But I was like, wow. And, and just like that, and just like Game of Thrones, I, you know, I, I was like, you know, <laughs> I have to read the books first and, and get my mind there and, and absorb all the characters and, and how they yeah. develop and, and how, how, you know, it journeys and, and how things twist and turn because you will never get that in a movie because it's the condensed version of that. Right. And so right. um, now I, I just do not do it. I read the book first and then mm -hmm. I do the movie afterwards. I do not do the opposite yeah. or do it in the process of, because it just, well, I, I say Game of Thrones, but that was kind of like, a, <laughs> that was a, one time, one time. So yeah, we watched Game of Thrones and I'm in the process of still reading the books because there's like 19 of them. But, I know. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. one of those things. I just can't, I can't do it. I have to, yeah. Yeah, no, it's absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the show is really good, but it's it's like you said, you get a little bit more in depth with uh, the book. material with the books that helps yeah. you actually enjoy the show that much more because you just understand that character. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Bingo. That's exactly what I was trying to say with all that. <laughs> all right. Favorite book? Uh, favorite book. Gosh, uh, but you're going to laugh because this is an older book, but it's always been Little Women. Oh, something, okay. something about I read it when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably where all of this kind of the seed was planted back mm -hmm. then when I read Little Women for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, I loved the idea of these family of sisters that mm -hmm. that are so strong, the mom, everybody. It's like just they they're the main ones. And you didn't see a lot of that when we were kids, you know? So but yeah, little women. <laughs> All right. Most influential female for you. Uh Audrey Hepburn. Oh, okay. So she's, I'm, she's in the bathroom over there. <laughs> yeah, I have I have her right there. <laughs> I uh I not just because of her acting and her movies and stuff like that but I um when I lived in Boise they have a memorial for Anne Frank and so I did a lot of looking into Anne Frank and all of that part of the history and stuff and with my book but um primarily at that time I was like I remember Audrey Hepburn there was a mention about Audrey Hepburn and her time during that war and um and I was just awed and after that I just read more and more about her outside of her acting Mm -hmm. And so I think she's just amazing. What well, was, I mean, she, she did like the goodwill or not goodwill, the, the ambassador, the UNICEF. She was, mm -hmm. I mean, amazing. So outside of all that, but what she did during the war was mm -hmm. what kind of just took it to a whole new level for me. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So if you could sit down with one female living or a deceased, who would it be? Um, I, I thought about this question and it's kind of funny because, um, and it's going to sound cheesy, but it's the, the 
one of the characters in my book. She's she's real. She's a real character that I tossed in my book. Um, and I researched her. When I started researching her, I became obsessed with her. Mm -hmm. um, she's, you know, an undercover agent, American. There's a good storyline there. And people uh, will probably, I, I think some people have already known about her because I think there's a movie out about her. But um, I didn't know. I nobody. She's this tough female soldier from the war that did a lot, mm -hmm. but I didn't see a whole lot about her anywhere. So I was just intrigued. So that's one of the reasons why I was like, I'm gonna throw her in the book. I'm gonna, she's gonna be. She's not a main part, but she's she's in there. And I I think I would like to meet her if she were still alive. I would I would want to shake her hand. And, and who is it? So her name, her real name is Virginia Hall. Uh, okay. They called her the limping lady at the time. So um, she had an injury, mm -hmm. uh, a hunting injury that resulted in an amputation, leg amputation, but that didn't stop her. Mm -hmm. It didn't stop her from joining the OSS at the time mm -hmm. um, and, and doing some amazing things during the war. So that, that was like amazing to me. I was like, okay. And then, uh, She's just one of the many other female uh, people in our in our history that mm -hmm. I have added into my story. You'll you'll find other ones tossed in there that have done some amazing things. And it was a lot of fun researching all of them and, and looking into their stories. Yeah, I would and, shake, I would want to meet any of them and shake their hands. <laughs> we all have a story, whether it's yeah. told or not. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. I haven't seen you in so long. Virtual hug. I'll see you soon. I'll yes. see you soon though. A couple for months. Sure. Couple months. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and for everybody else that's out there, thank you so much. And we will see you all next week. So take care. Yay. <laughs>